Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. This is going to be the final video in the short series on figured bass symbols. I'm going to start by showing you a neat little mnemonic device that we can use to help remember all the figure bass symbols before they just sort of bury themselves into your brain naturally. So I'm going to show all of these figure bass symbols starting with triads first. So triads, we have our root position we have first inversion and we have second inversion over here. The root position was blank, nothing there. First inversion was a six, second version, six four. Dotted line, and then seventh chords. We had root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and these versions. A few more numbers. Root position was a seven. First inversion, six, five. Second inversion was four, three, I'm running out of space. And then four, two, the last one. So that seems like a bit of a mess, a whole bunch of numbers. So I'm going to help to uncomplicate this a little bit. Now, how can we remember all these numbers? Well, if we look at them all together and we count how many digits there are, starting with the six, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers here. What's a good way to remember 10 numbers? Phone number. We're sort of naturally programmed now to remember phone numbers, although not as much in as in the past because our phones sort of remember the phone numbers now. Let's take those triads and turn them into an area code, 664. And then we're going to take the rest of the phone number as the seventh chord, 765-4342. The BPS hotline number. If you can remember this phone number, you can remember all the figured base symbols, or BPS, standing for base position symbols. We have our root position being blank. We have our first inversion, six. Here's the six, four first inversion, uh, second inversion, I mean. And here's the seven, six, five, four, three, four, two. So if you're having a hard time remembering all these, try to commit this phone number to memory. 664-765-4342. It won't take that long to remember that. It's, it's just like committing a phone number to memory. So it's sort of an interesting way to remember a lot of these figure base symbols. Just a little trick that I found that sort of, sort of helps. All right, I'm going to clear some space here. We're going to go back to the staves, and we're going to show a few of these chords what they look like using figure base, just because we have a little bit of time remaining. Clear every little nice little thing off of there. Okay, head back over here. I'm going to change from my fat pen to my normal pen. And let's do some chords using a grand staff. Nice, messy grand staff. How about let's do the key of B flat major. Two flats. And I'm going to slide this up just a little bit. That's not what I want. I want this so I can slide it up. Perfect. So we're going to take a chord in B flat major and we're going to use all three forms of analysis that we've learned as of yet. I'm going to take an E flat triad in first inversion. So I'm going to write a G here and I'll put an E flat in this voice, which is in the key signature, so I don't need the accidental. And then I'll put a B flat and an E flat up here. So if we collect all the pitches, we see that there's an E flat, there's a G, and there's a B flat, which is an E flat major triad over G if we're using our chord symbols. And then if we use Roman numerals, E flat is the fourth scale degree in B flat major, and it's a major triad. So we would write an uppercase Roman numeral four. This is a triad in first inversion, so we add the six to it. Now we have just about everything that we need to know about that triad using all these forms of analysis. Um, now typically when you're doing music theory homework or you're learning music theory, you just use a combination of Roman numerals and bass position symbols, or figured bass symbols I should say. Uh, but the chord symbols can be especially useful when we get into more advanced concepts. But here's an example of a diatonic triad showing all three forms of analysis. Really, like I said, it tells us all that we need to know. Thanks.